when I left last week, I was really struggling with this edge flow um, on this section of the bike. Difficult to see the edges. Um, so when I finished the stream, uh, I decided to reevaluate what I was doing and just change the approach, which is often the case with this kind of thing. So I decided to split sections off and add in the extrusions and then build on from those because there's there's parts here where you can see this intersects this uh, um, this ring here or this uh, this um, cylinder and that's very difficult to when you're working flat to get that kind of edge flow flat and then extrude I think sometimes you just have to go in and do the extrusions and build the geometry um, and also in here these sections in here were quite tricky you can see the example the reference image it's got this kind of little groove around here and it's kind of open in here and I just I was doing my head in trying to work out flat how to do that um, topology so I ended up getting it basically there, then extruding and then cleaning up the topology to um, to come up with this. And I think I've come pretty close. So that was where I got to with that section. And that was starting to look much better. And I moved on from there to number three. And that's where I am right now. So I've gone, I saved areas that I'd created flat and I just I just split them off. And then I extruded this section, and then I just added new geometry just to join them up again. So it's um, it's looking pretty clean. Looks pretty nice. It's uh, pretty much all quads. There might be the odd triangle there that I just can't avoid. Um, but not too bad. So I'm quite happy with that section, and also the way you know this this stuff comes around here and around this side here. This little loop around there so I've still got to go in and maybe add a few control cuts but it's looking uh, looking much better so my issue now is I need to extrude this section up here and it's a little bit of a challenge because let me just show you the reference image it doesn't just extrude straight up it sort of is a ramp it's flat here and it sort of ramps up and it's quite high here and then it gets a little less high here so it's I mean I know that th th there is a bend in this because um, I'm working on something that's flat at the moment but I'm gonna have to deform it to bend it in which I'll do afterwards but I need to add like a variable sort of extrusion in here and obviously it's a challenge because it's a fair bit of geometry in here now You see all this geometry? If this was only a few polygons, it's much easier to get smooth um, extrusions. But now, because I've had to sort of build in a fair bit of um, topology to hold these circles and rings and shit, um, extruding this up is not as straightforward. So I'm going to have to tackle that now. So just grabbing my polygon pen tool, I'm just going to come in and just, I've just noticed a few little areas where I can just fix the tension up, being very precise. Remember all of this makes a big difference when you're texturing. Um, you can see that the tension under subdivision is pulling away from the actual um, unsubdivided mesh, but that's okay because when subdivided that will hold this edge in line or in place. Um, I'm just going to quickly just do this before I tackle the extrusion. And I'll be doing that live um, for the first time. So it might take a little bit of work, a couple of different attempts. As I said, with this many polygons, doing, um, doing it can be a little more challenging. And that's the whole thing with 3D modeling is it's doing everything in the right order. And sometimes you don't do it in the right order or you can't do it in the order that is required. So you have to just... Uh, make the most of what you have and do the best you can and that's one of the great things about 3d modeling it's that challenge 
Um, okay, so now I have to go in and make some selections. Let's see. Uh, press 9. And I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button and the control key just to change my brush size. Just dragging that out. So I need to select, let's see, Q to just switch off that subdivision surface. Once again, always looking at my reference. So I've got to get this area around here. So I'm just going to pop that on my other monitor as I'm looking at this. And I do have to consider that this is um, comes right down to a flat part here. So that's something to consider as well. Let's see. Let me get all of this, just make that a bit bigger. We come all the way down to here, grab all of that, and I don't want any of that. I don't think I want any of that. We'll see. Now, this is interesting. I've got to turn off Twitter because it's making sound. Uh, I've got this situation here where it's not much extrusion on the tip here, but there's a fair bit of extrusion up here. So I've got to keep that in mind. And you see I've got um, thinking about what I need to select here. I probably need to oh geez it's hard to it's hard to tell sometimes. This is where having proper guide images makes a big difference. Okay, I need to get this I think. Maybe if I have a look down here, let's see. This might be better. Yeah, so I need all of these. I've tried to model the topology as close as I can to the guide image, the reference image. Uh, just wondering if I need to pull all that up. Uh, we'll see. Okay, I might have to clean up this section here when I've when I've extruded it. I'm not too happy with um, with this here. It's not very straight, so I need to just bring this a little bit more even. It's almost impossible to see anything on the reference image. That's not too bad. Okay, so I've got that selected. Let's take a look. Now there is one section here, one part here, this section here, that also has an extrusion, but that's on top of this extrusion. So I've been doing my extrusions in order. You can see I've already I've already done this uh, this extrusion here. This one on in oh, let's change my tool. This one in here. And now I've got to bring this up. So obviously the first most logical way would be just to sort of pull it up like that, right? Um, and that might be the way I have to do it. <clears throat> but the print, the thing is, that's not giving me that sort of variable extrusion. Um, and I could go and bring these down one by one, which is, you know, to bring that down to flat, which is, you know, an absolute pain in the ass. So I was, uh, I was testing some options yesterday. One of them was using the magnet tool. Um, and you've seen me, those of you who've watched me work before, have seen me use the magnet tool. Um, what is the shortcut for that? 
shift C magnet is M I. I like to sort of learn the shortcuts and then use them straight away. So I, so I can um, memorize them. So M I, so magnet tool, putting that up, we'll do that. Right. Um, but obviously that's no good. So I need to make it bigger. So once again, control and middle mouse button. So I can do that. And let's take a look at the magnet settings. I love this tool. Uh, let's see down here. I'm working in 1920 by 1080, so I don't have a lot of space. All right, so what do we got? We've got it on um, smear and that's fine. But look, I've got the fall off on bell and that's why it's giving us that, which is really great in some cases. Can you imagine trying to model that kind of shape. Yeah, that's really, really handy. Um, let's see, so I want, let's try linear. Yeah, and I need to make it much bigger. Constant. That's what I want, but I think I need to change the size of the brush. Uh, so constant's no good because that just gives me a, a regular extrude. It's got to be linear. So that's the kind of thing I'm looking for, this kind of ramp. Uh, it might require me to do a couple of moves. Let's see what surface does. Make a difference. Um, so even soft selections won't work with this either. What I really want is some kind of, um, you know, gradient soft selection where this whole section here is selected, then it and then there's a nice fall off down to here. So when you're using soft selections, obviously, you get that yellow. Um, but what I want is like bright yellow here, and then a fall off just down into this section here. But of course, it's going to it's going to affect all of this as well. So Soft selections just aren't the right thing to use here. But I'm thinking I can probably get, I mean, I could go, let's see. Uh, what if I go just on, what axis is that? Is that the Y? What's the Y doing? No, it's the wrong one. What axis do I need? I need the X or is it the Z? No, it's not the Z, it's X. Yeah, so this way, look, I can, I'm can i dragging all around, but it's only going up on the X, so that's that's good, so that constrains that. Let's make this even bigger. I wonder if I could do something like that. And I'm trying to get this down to flat here, and that, that's done that, just about. It needs to be a little bit higher, and it's gonna take a little bit of, a little bit of mucking around. If I, or maybe if I quantize this, let's go, um, is there any quantize options? Maybe in my modeling, if I quantize, modeling, enable quantize, will this work? No, it doesn't work. And I can't even shift snap it. So there's no, it doesn't seem to be any way to quantize the magnet tool. Hmm. So, just bring that up like, maybe like that. That's pretty good. Is that bringing that up too high? I want a little bit of lift there. Like that. And maybe if I bring the brush down a little bit. This is going to be a little fiddly. I might be able to scale this. That's pretty good. I like how that has given me that variable 
um, extrusion there because that really sort of matches this here. It's taller on this section here, and then it sort of it sort of um, gets a little uh, I don't know how to ex how to describe that. What it um, it's a little shallower there, right? And it's shallower there. It's a bit there's a bit more of a lump here, a bit more of a bump. Maybe that's not high enough. So I might want to do that again, make it a bit taller. I mean, most of this is going to be hidden by other parts of the motorbike anyway. So I know I'm being sort of really agonizing over this, but I'm just modeling one piece at a time and trying to make that look as good as I can, no matter where it is on the bike. Gee, got to get that brush bigger. Yeah, how's that looking down here? No, that's brought that up, see? Super fiddly. There is method to my madness. And if anyone can think of a, a better way to do this, by all means, just shout it out. Okay. That could be all right. That's pretty good. I need to bring this section up a bit. This is where the magnet tool really comes in handy. Because when you think of the magnet tool and the brush tool and that kind of stuff, you think, well, you know, you think kind of sculpting and organic modeling, but it's so useful for so many things beyond organic modeling. Okay, so that's and that's a pretty good start. Um, so what I need to do now is obviously this is flat here, so I need to flatten this out. This is all this has all come out pretty well. So I'm thinking that the best way to flatten this is to choose a point where it, it should be flat. This is sticking up a little too high here. I'll just bring that down. Okay, so, oops, make sure I keep that selection. Um, I might just save that selection. Let's go set selection. Got that down in my my icons there. And so grab my let's see selection tool again and just deselect some of this. Stuff I don't want to mess up. Maybe all of this. And this, it's, this might not work. It could be, it could add too many lumps and bumps, but I might be all right. But I can't, what I might have to do is um, get this to almost right and then remove some of these edges just to smooth it out and then reintroduce the edges. So you can't be afraid to do that either. So T to scale. I want to find a point probably around... I don't know, arbitrary point around here. I'm holding down L. So remember, L will toggle my enable axis just temporarily. And I'll click on a point and that will move my axis. Just make sure I've got, let's see, uh, I want normal maybe. Yeah. So that's it's moving on the normals. So now I want to scale that down. You can see how that lifts that up. So, so the problem is it is lifting up 
this as well. So what I might be able to do here is use a soft selection. So get rid of this stuff. It's a little bit dodgy. But Let's see. Probably won't work because it's going to select these areas here. Um, just going to use HB modeling just to decrease my brush size. Got to make sure I'm in um, move. Yeah, see that's that's going to scale this up as well. I don't think that's going to work. I'll try it. I'm in linear mode. Maybe surface T. L scale. Well, that did work, didn't it? Look at that. See how that's no longer raising up that section there? So that's straightening that out. So I'm holding shift to snap that to zero. And it's, but it's pulled up that section there as well. But that's okay. I can pull that back down again. That's not bad, is it? It's not bad at all. So see how a combination of different tools and you know, the magnet tool to get you part of the way there um, and then things using things like soft selections can be really helpful because if i'd have if i'd have just extruded that whole section up um, then i would have had to i mean i probably could have just you know pulled this down these edges down incrementally these edges here uh, these edges here pull them down incrementally to get that ramp but then i wouldn't have had this sort of um this really nice, uh, what's I'm trying to think of the word, nice uh, result, obviously, with um, with this section here. Because that really has come out something very similar to what I've got going on here. So that's that's pretty good. And you have to remember also that this, this piece here is going to be extruded up anyway. It's probably going to require a little bit of cleaning up. But considering how many polygons I've got in here, um, if I just press Q, obviously there's a, you know, I've got to fix up this section here. But the result is pretty good, I have to say. So once again, the magnet tool comes into play here. So even though even though this is you know solid hard surface modeling, you're using the magnet tool to give you that sort of more organic control, which is great. And remember, the magnet tool and the brush tool can be replaced by the actual sculpting tools. Things like pull and grab, you can use those tools as well. Good thing about these tools too is that they have symmetry. I don't think the um, uh, I don't think the magnet tool has symmetry, does it? No. So, but I don't need symmetry in this case. So if you have a look at it from here, it's actually really starting to look close to the actual real thing. Let me just zoom out. It's raining hard outside. Not bad. I mean, considering once again that this is going to be pretty well hidden um, a lot of it's going to be hidden on the bike. Let me just um, see if I can find another image. I'm just going to roll through these with my mouse wheel. Actually, I'll use my arrow key here. So you can see, there's a good example of it. This is the right hand side, of course. But this section here is really obvious. But a lot of it's hidden. You can see it's all hidden down here. But it's, it just, it's just such important detail. You can see it down in here. In this section down in here. You can see it down here, down here. So it is an important piece. And I can't just um, create parts of it and then just you know ignore sections that are hidden by the, uh, the exhaust and stuff like that. So I have to actually build it uh, correctly. So definitely a really good challenge, this piece. I'm just going to come back 
on my example images, my reference images. One thing to keep in mind too is look at this image here. It's really rounded here and it's even got, it looks like it's got a subtle indentation in this as well. So I, I might not be able to do everything because um, without proper guide images, you know, without proper orthographic guide images, it's almost impossible to get it looking exactly the same. But one thing to keep in mind also is that you can see these uh, bevels are really rounded. They're not sharp. So I've got to keep that in mind. One of the things that beginners tend to do, and I was the same, is to try to make all of your um, control cuts nice and tight and so everything's really sharp, you know, really punchy, sharp edges. But um, it really depends on the model that you're modeling, doesn't it? And this is um, something I've got to think about as well. I think my topology is slightly wrong in that section. You can see on my one, this one uh, might need a little bit more work in this section here. So I'll have a look at that. I'm going to see what's that? I'm going to see the ep the epic breakdown in my port. Ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, you may, what if I do um. What if I do some sort of, ex if I do enough detail on this, what if I do some exploded view where the bike just builds? That would be cool, wouldn't it? But um, in all seriousness, it, it might be a, that might be a possibility. Um, even just to do some kind of thing like that. Uh, yeah, the final, um, the final rendered images will be really close. I'll be able to do some, you know, some real sort of nice close-ups of, of pieces. Uh, very excited about that. Uh, if I still remember how to do texturing after this. <clears throat> That's the trouble. I um, spend so much time modeling, I forget how to um, forget how to use Substance Painter. I got a small Substance Painter job that I um, uh, need to texture, which I might work on this weekend just as a as a refresher. Aren't you supposed to be working, Evan, anyway, since you've got three um, three projects? I'll have to get you, um, I'll have to work out how to get the microphone sorted out so I can have uh, guest speakers too, Evan, so you can we can chat at the same time. <laughs> got to see if they're open yet. Uh, okay, so now I need to, I think I'm pretty good with this. I need to clean up a few things, obviously. I've messed up in here a little bit. Um, so I'll just do a little bit of cleanup. And then I'll think about extruding this section here. I think I'm pretty good here. I think that's actually worked out really well. It's just come down to a nice... Nice shape down here. Isn't that good? Look at that down there. The little section down there. It's really come out really nicely. If we have a look at the uh, original image. I can find it. Let's see. There it is. Yeah, there it is. That's one thing I miss about the Mac is the preview. It's so much easier. Um, see this down here, it comes out like that, which I think I've matched that pretty closely. That looks pretty good. But I do have to extrude up this section here. And there is a, there is a stronger line in there as well. And I think that comes all the way around to there. It's so hard to see. So 
this uh, let's go Q E. This line here's got to come. Uh, it's got to come up. This edge, sorry, line. I'm calling them lines. So we'll see about that. about that in a moment. I'm just going to clean this section up here. Um, all right. Okay. If I use a slide tool, that's probably not going to be the best. I might just go into a different view here. Um, not obvious the problem in this view. Sometimes I like to select adjacent points and see how they look in different views. I get a better idea about how they're offset. Right view is no good. Let me just bring that down. I'm going to change my axis back to axis. I think it's just a case of just pulling it down again. Yeah. This is a kind of cool technique as well. I'll see if this works today. Um, it's really easy to forget to use the axis tools in Cinema 4D. Let me just check this. Um, we should talk about that, Evan. You know, if you ever want to talk about um, you know workflow and approach. Let's just talk about it because I'm asking people all the time. <laughs> you know, the correct workflow can save you a lot of time. Um, okay, so I want to, I want to reline these points up with this point here. Um, now, there's a couple of ways to do that. One is I could let's see, um, I could hold down L, click on the point that I know is correct. See this point still collected, uh, connected, uh, selected. Press T, and then scale that down. I think that'll probably work. I'll just try these ones as well. Uh, and scale it down. Yeah, that's pretty good. There is another way. Um, if I go and select this point, and let's see, I want uh, E, and if I turn on, let's see, point snapping, just using HB modeling, vertex snap, um, and is it, I'm going to see if this is the right way to do this. Um, yeah, so if I right click with the control key held down, I've got the move tool selected. So control key held down, right click, and that changes that uh, axis and I can bring it back and snap. See how it snaps to that point? And when it's snapped, I drag it out on that axis and then I line it up with the point that I want to line it up with. See that? I love this technique. It's so good. Boop. Just like that. Perfect. So once again, Move tool selected, right mouse button, control key held down. That will snap that back. I've got to have point snapping turned on. That snaps it to that point. When it's snapped, uh, I've got to get it snap and then drag it out. Sometimes it's a bit fiddly. Right click, snap, and there we go. So I'll just do that one like that. And you can see that's perfectly in line. Such a good technique. Such a, such a good technique, that one. So it's definitely worth looking at the snapping um, features and how you can use it with um, uh, the guides and also that one there where you drag out the guide. That way I know that they're perfectly in line. Let's just do it once more.
snap. Oop, got to make sure I've really snapped on it. Snap and oh, still, it can be a little fiddly. There we go. And now that's now. See how my axes are wonky. Gotta make sure I'm on the right axis. See if this does work with this one. Yeah, there we go. Yay! So I know that that's going to be perfectly in line now. I'll just press Q, render. There we go. So that cleaned that up. I mean, it's okay to eyeball stuff. We do it. All, I do it all the time. But it's nice to be able to have the have the skills to be able to line things up super precisely. Now I'm going to just check out this top area. There is an issue up the top here, obviously. I'm going to tackle that in a minute. This piece, piece here, this point, um, that's supposed to be in line with that, isn't it? So I can probably do the same thing. Let's try it again. So it's okay on the Y. Actually, I can probably just do the other one. Um, L, click, T, and then just scale that. Did that do it? No, it didn't, it didn't work. That's already in line with that. I'm just going to have to pull it out like that. Just turn off point snapping. Have a look in a different view. Just leave that for a moment. There is an issue here where we haven't got it perfectly smooth. And I mean, this is the last possible thing that it's like the last uh, thing you want to be doing is moving individual points on a mesh that, you know, isn't super, super simple because it's almost impossible to not have lumps and bumps. And you've probably seen me talking a lot about the shrink wrap tool. That helps me avoid that kind of thing. In this case, I don't have any choice. So it's a case of moving individual points and previewing. That looks pretty good. And then checking out the fong angle. All right, so next I'm going to pull up this section here. Now, if you have any specific questions, just uh, shout them out. Perfect day for this now. It's raining outside. Saturday morning, got a cup of coffee. And who doesn't love a bit of modeling? Uh, Q. Just looking at my reference again. Okay, so you can see I've, in this case, I've already accounted for um, let me just check the reference image again. So I've got this little bevel here. Now I probably don't need, I've got this edge here, you can see it here, if I just press UL, I've got that edge there, and I've also got this edge here. So that edge there, that loop, is this, it's this here, it's this extrusion there, right? But I've also given myself a loop here. Let me just move this out of the way. I've also given myself a loop here. And yeah, that's the bottom of that. So I think that loop is necessary as well. That's the, that's around the base of this. Remember, I've modeled this flat um, and taken into account the the bevels. So all I've got to do is, let's go UL, select that, UF, sorry, UF to fill, and that selects that. Um, 
I might just make sure all these are straight. So 2E, edge mode, shift, control, select, and I'm using HB lineup. Watch what happens to this line. It'll be nice and straight after I click this, like that. I'm just doing this, um, just double checking this before I extrude this, just making sure that everything's, you know, everything's right. It's easier to do this on uh, something that's flat than it is on to do, to do something that's already extruded. I might just line up these as well. It's just really, really annoying me that these aren't equal. So I'm just going to select these, these rings. And I'm not using ring select because then I'd have to deselect a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm just ring selecting that. And down here, and down here, and HB even distribution. Just click and like that. That's better. Love that tool. Use it all the time. All right, so now I can come back to hit three. And I'm pretty happy with that. So, this one doesn't have to be control extruded, it's just got to be dragged up. One thing to keep in mind though is, there's always something to keep in mind, I've got, I've got an extrusion here and I've got this, this part's extruded as well. So I've got to handle that as well in a minute. But I'll do this piece first. So I'll just come and lift this up. About that. I'm just eyeballing it. You can see here, see how that, that is now the extruded section? So I've modeled that in flat. Like that. Okay, Q, chase render. That's looking pretty good. Um, Yep. Okay, and now I need to bring up this section here. So I'm just going to press Control D. Oh, sorry, Shift V. Sorry, Shift V to see my viewport settings. Click on back and just decrease my transparency so I can get a sense of where that line is. Okay, so if I just deselect this. Maybe select this as well. All right, now I need to drag this up, but of course it's variable extrusion. This one, I guess that's that's, that's the, the best way of describing it. See how it pulls up, but it's not a straight um, right angle there. So I need to think about how to tackle that. So if I pull this, if I pull this straight up, it goes like that. But that's not what I want. What I want is, let's see, it might be able to do it using the magnet tool, same thing. Um, Q, just have a sip of coffee. So what's everyone working on at the moment? Oh, another headset. You should be a Evan. You should be an absolute legend at doing headsets. Damn man, you do so many of them. I guess that's because you work for Asus, right? You should be able to do them with your eyes closed by now. Uh, I'm just evaluating this. See how this is actually fairly straight here, and this is fairly angled along the side. Then it's quite straight there. I might need to, you can see how mine is actually being pulled in slightly. I might need to just pull this back, but I can't really do that. Mm, I think it's more a case of taking these edges and pulling them back in this way. It would be something like this. 
It should be. <laughs> yeah. Damn, modeling. You know, I love it, but geez, it takes practice. I'll bring this in. I always forget that the um, I always forget tweak mode, this little button here. Um, if I've got nothing selected, I can literally just click on points and just drag them out. If I have something selected, then I try and click on it, then it's going to move that point. But if there's nothing selected and tweak mode's turned on, then I can just grab individual points. And that is so not straight. Sometimes it's just great just to cut a line straight through it, boom, like that. And then just double, ooh, well, try and double click and just um, just delete. And also use things like uh, HB lineup, not, not uh, even distribution lineup. Ah, why is that doing that? Let's see, maybe because there's, let's go point mode, there's a few points in there. Uh, Yeah, that's it. Interesting. That's better. Okay. I'm going to fix it up in a moment. Okay, so does that pull that back in a bit? I have to come in even a little bit more. Okay, so my reference image really does come up quite close in here like that. Difficult to tell. I think this is going to have to come up in here like this. And you can see how almost impossible to account for this variable extrusion when you're modeling it flat. It's just sometimes you're just going to have to extrude it. So I definitely learned something from doing this. Model as much as I can flat and then um, extrude various sections and then join those join those up. You can see this crappy low-res image. How's that? That's better. Obviously, it's all going to have to be extruded down. Which I might do in a moment. Um, let's come back to here. And magnet tool. So let's see if this works. Save. Coffee. So, okay, I've got six people watching at the moment. I, I, besides Evan, who's doing the headset, is anyone else doing any modeling? It's okay if you're just a beginner. You know, everyone has to start somewhere. Am I? Okay, I want this to come up right from the middle of this. So I'm just going to... scale this in and collapse this just for a moment. Uh, where's collapse? I should know the shortcut for that. Uh, there we go. It's UC collapse. I'm not productive around the clock, man. I'm not saying if, what's everyone working on like right this moment. I'm saying what's everyone working on these days. Okay, so I'm going to just grab these as well. 
um, UF. I just want to have that point because that's going to be my point where I drag the magnet from. MI, like that, see? But once again, that looks a bit crap. So what have we got? We've got smear. Um, don't want surface. Ooh. It's probably not going to work because this is a really, it's really quite curved here. Um, is there another way to do this? This might have to be done manually. Um, one way to do this, actually, if this doesn't work, which I don't think it will, No, I, I'd be probably be better off with this to, and this is what I uh, mentioned before about removing some geometry first, and then reintroducing it. So I might want to just straighten these up. HB line up, like that, um, and come down to here. Oh, that's, that's that's bugging me that. I had to reintroduce an extra edge here before when I was um, reconciling this section here, and I've messed that up a little bit. But um, I might just very quickly do this, uh, and I'll relax that in a moment. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I'm going to dissolve a few things just to get them out of the way to make this a little easier. So. Grab these, grab these, MN. Now, I want uh, nine selection tool, get rid of that. And let's see, uh, E move tool. L just to pop that onto that point there and it basically comes up like that. So I don't have to deal with those edges. I can introduce those in a minute. I'm not sure how high it's supposed to be. It's just totally eyeballing it. Obviously, I don't have any. Um, I don't have any top-down image. If I did, that would be fantastic. Uh, I don't know. It's probably probably okay. Now I need to reintroduce those edges. So, KL, KK, just recorded um, yesterday afternoon, I recorded part two of my cut tools tutorials for my YouTube channel. So yesterday I focused on the loop cut and path cut tools. So I'll, I'll have that edited up this afternoon and I'll post that as well. Uh, KL. Actually, I'll just bring this down first. So see what I mean about removing some topology? really difficult to get things uh, smooth if there's too many polygons. Um, so just temporarily remove some, add in, add in your detail, and then put the topology back in. 
I'm going to put the edges back in. That looks fairly similar. Maybe I'll view it from the top. Probably not going to be able to give me a good enough view here. No, it's at an angle. So interesting that that's not flat there as well. It looks pretty flat to me though. I think it's just the angle that I have the object. Hard to see. Let's see it from here. There we go. Maybe if I just bring this back into here, like that. Let's lift that up. Uh, I hate that. Um, what about if we choose, I'm right clicking on that. That's not going to work either. Um, axis. I don't want to mess around with changing my axis um, angle, so I'm just going to eyeball it. Okay, that's pretty good. Just lining these up. Keeping my topology as clean as I can. Um, UE, no, it didn't work because I've got a selection. Uh, need to deselect all, then UE, and that converts that end gon to an edge. I'm just going to UL, select this, UF, click in there, and HB relax, just to relax that out. You can see that is much um, less tense now, much less tense. The tension's better now. Uh, I'm not liking this here. I think I might have to... Just bring these a little bit more even. That's better. And probably these ones as well. And three. Try that again. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's have a look at this now. It's come a long way. It's really starting to look like the actual piece now. And it's a serious piece of geometry, isn't it? It's all one piece. Um, but trying to model it as one piece, as I, as I said, is was very difficult. Um, better to model it in parts and then um, you know, join them up. And obviously, when you're modeling this in, in various parts, you're trying to use as few polygons as possible, keep it as low res as possible. Definitely tricky when you have uh, curves and circles because you need to have enough edges to hold that shape. So it's always a balance between curvature and detail. Uh, thanks, Evan. I, I look forward to seeing that. Um, so, Taylor, is your Taylor is your name Taylor Kenny? Your first name Taylor. If it is, I'll, I'll call you Taylor. Um, my workspace. Um, what I've with my modeling workspace. Uh, when I first started learning modeling, what I would do when I learned a particular tool, um, a particular modeling tool. I would add it. I would add it down here. I literally come up to uh, customization, uh, customize palettes. I'd find the tool, and then I would drag it down here, and that would remind me that I've learned that tool. I've used that tool before, um, and I just kept, I kept adding and adding tools in here as I learned them, which is really, really good way to go because I don't have to search for them again. Or what was that tool called? And then obviously, um, I started to use HB Modeling Bundle, and HB Modeling Bundle adds a lot of these tools. These are uh, all tools from HB Modeling Bundle. And then, you know, other different um, plugins that I use, you know, Rhizome. 
Um, there's another one here that's on Gumroad for setting the modeling axis, but I always forget that I have it. Um, so just, and then sculpting tools. So just building on my uh, workspace as I go. And every time I change my workspace or add something, I come up to, um, let's see, where am I? Window, customization, uh, save layout as. And you can see I have one JD 2020. So I literally save over that. And then I come up to window customization and I choose save as startup layout. So I'm always updating my layout as I go. Um, yes, yeah, so as, as you asked, Alex, that's um, um, for changing the uh, modeling axis point. And I forget that I have it most of the time uh, because yeah, as you saw in my workflow, I tend to use L and then I just click on the point that I want. Um, but I should probably use this more. Yeah, yeah, just just keep adding the tools that you've learned into your interface and um, you won't forget that you um, that's part of your arsenal. And also things like selections, you know, like set selection, uh, unhide all and hide. Um, they're really handy to have, otherwise you'll find yourself always coming up to um, these menus here and that's a pain in the ass. So this is actually starting to look really good. Let's have a look at the reference image again. Uh, so there is a little extrusion on this ring here. And let's see if we can push that or pull that out of that. You can see I've already, remember I've modeled this flat, so I've already got the perfect circle. Got the perfect ring. I'm just looking at the reference image again. So I should be able to just go uh, this is a bit of an issue here. What I need to do probably first is 2E. So 2 being my edges, because I've set shortcuts for polygons 3, edges 2, and points 1. Uh, you shouldn't be coming over here and clicking on these manually. Um, UL to select that ring. And I'm just going to save. I always save before I use a slide tool because it's prone to crash. Um, and MO for the slide tool. So I know that's perfectly flat, so I'm just going to control drag out a new edge. Is it going to do it? Slide tool is unpredictable. Um, I'll actually just drag one in. Hang on, what have we got? Proportional. Um, there's a few ways to do this. There you go. I could have just KL and done that. Uh, I was going to drag it outside, but it's not playing ball. Hi, you know, thank you. Thanks for joining. Uh, okay, so three for polygon mode. Uh, UL. I can get rid of that for now. Well, I don't need it anymore because then I just put that there for the magnet tool. And just looking at my reference image. Now this is this is fairly rounded here, this section just here. It's not a very sharp curve and it actually there's almost nothing on the edge there. And I've accounted for that. So I need to what I'll do is I'll pull this up first. Uh two oh sorry, three E. E for the move tool. Doesn't come up very high, just comes up about that high. And then and I didn't control drag that up to, to um I just I just pull that up like that. Okay. How does that look? There's some there's some issues around here, that's what I was looking at before. Okay. So it is fairly, it is fairly, what well, is sharper on these on these corners. So I need to think about that as well. So probably the best way to do that is to add a control loop. Just have a sip of my coffee.
Cool, we've got about nine people watching. Fantastic. All right, so we'll keep going for a while. Um, right, so I need to sort of add a... I don't want to add too much sharpening to this, just enough to match the image. When I double click, it'll create a loop around there. Now I'm wondering, it is fairly tight around the whole thing. Maybe I need to MO, control drag out a loop there using the slide tool. Preview. Yeah, that's pretty good. It looks just like the reference image, but I do need to have it sharper up the top. So, um, let's do that again. It's quite round there. UE. I've still got some polygons selected. They changed that behavior. UE to convert those. ME. Very, very pointy, isn't it? Um, I don't really like having these triangles on the corners. So I'd like to probably move that down one. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So 2E, just select this. MO, control drag out. And let's go KK. Like that. Pressing the space bar to drop the tool. ME with control. That's the polygon pen tool. With control, I can dissolve those edges. Now I've moved that down one. See, now we've got nice quads. And we've moved that, uh, triang that, that triangle, not triangle, sorry, that diamond down one loop. We should get much smoother edges. Now that's much nicer. Come up to the other side, do the same thing. Q, just bring that back in here. KK, line cut, drop that one back in there. I probably could have gone, uh, done this a little more in a straightforward way, but remember sometimes, well often what you'll do is you will try one approach and that will lead you to another approach. But sometimes you just got to try something and that, and then the result will allow you to see a better result, if that makes sense. And I think as you get better and better at it, you do that less. You just, you just, you know, you go straight to the, the correct result. Now I think all I have to do now, 2E, just select and Control Shift Select. Now I just need to pull that down a little bit. Maybe, I'm just looking at the reference image. It's fairly rounded. And that's pretty good. See that's all quads as well. And that pole is, is you know, is way away from the edge. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, Let's have a look at the reference. You can see that. So that's, you know, it's, I think that's pretty good. It's a little more rounded there. 
it's fairly good. It's definitely more rounded there. I wonder if I can just tweak that a little bit. Q. Maybe select that guy. Scale him out a bit. Uh, that probably won't work. Um, maybe it will. I could probably just actually slide these edges out. Sliding. Test render. Yeah. And I could even, let's see, I could probably even bring that back. I could definitely bring this point back. Um, 1E, point mode. And maybe just bring this. I'm just just doing some testing here. See how that might work. I'm trying to round that out. One. This headset I'm wearing after a while makes my head burst because it's so tight. Sounds good though. Like that. I'm just using my um, middle mouse button and my so middle mouse button with the control key held down just to pan and right mouse button to zoom in. I could never imagine doing this with a pen tool. Taylor, one thing I notice is you wait a long time before sharpening anything. Um, oh yeah, sharpening's at the very end. Okay, so who wants to who wants to put up their hand and tell me why sharpening would be something you do at the end? Well, basically, obviously when you're sharpening something, you're adding more detail, right? You're adding more geometry. So, if you're adding more geometry and you haven't actually gotten all of your, um, all of your edge loops correct and all of your extrusions right in a lower poly mode where everything's nice and smooth, if you keep adding more geometry to tighten things up, then you're going to have a much harder time doing those uh, nice smooth extrusions. You saw here just a moment ago where I had to uh, I had to remove a couple of edges in order to make that much easier to pull that up. Um, so you only want to add that kind of detail in right at the very end because you're adding more detail and it makes it much harder to work with a model. I'm okay here with this because I'm getting close to finishing this. And um, none of these edges that I'm adding are messing up anything else. I'm just going to bring uh, this up. Actually, what I'll do, let me just, uh, can I, no, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to remove that. 
one thing I can do is three, nine, select that, T, right click, uh, normal, and then shift scale that. And that scales that on its normal, so I know that's flat. Same with this one. This might mess up my model, but we'll see. I'm just trying to get this to be a little smoother here. Uh, that's looking better. I, think, I guess that's probably enough. We have a look at the reference image. It's pretty close. I mean, it's, got, it's so close. Look, I mean, do you think I'm ever going to get this close in my final shots? <laughs> it's probably a little too much. I do think this could be a little more rounded, though. Let's see how we might do that. Um, tricky, because the, the topology is not really that friendly for something that's rounded. I might even leave that. It's so close. Let's see. I'm just I'm just evaluating this at the moment. Um, if I was to, if I really had to round that out a little bit more, what would I do? Put that down a bit. That's not bad. It is rounding out those edges a bit though. Just undo that. No, it doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, come on, Y. It's looking okay. It's very, very smooth here. It probably needs to be a little sharper. So I'm just double clicking to add to that. Um, I don't really want to add a loop on the inside. So I'm wondering if I can just, just save this, MO, just bring it up to tighten that up a bit, if that's going to be enough. It does make that very tight. Yeah, still not very round. Okay. I'm just going to save that um, and just have a bit of a play here to see if, if I rework that, I'm going to save this uh, incrementally. If I really had to have that more rounded, just going to have a bit of a play and see how that might work. It's going to dissolve this. I've already saved the version that I had. Uh, I'm going to dissolve, actually, I won't do that. I'll go uh, UE just to make those NGON lines edges, MN. It's going to go back to where I was here and just evaluate this. Not very straight now, is it? Let's go. 
polygons. Because I've rounded that out there, that's fine. Let's go um, L axis. Try that again. That brings that right up. That's no good. I'm going to leave that as it is really doesn't make much difference. Um, I'm just going to see if I can, this is the thing here, I've got, I've only got a certain amount of edges on that, on that uh, ring there. I'm just seeing if I can round these corners out a bit more. Obviously, if I cut into here, I'm going to mess up that circle. I'm just going to see I can always go back. I was pretty happy with what I had. I'm just going to see whether I can rework this topology a little bit. Lumpy there, isn't it? It's okay. This is just a test. Uh, see, that's really much more rounded there. So I could go with that. It's definitely giving me a much more rounded corner there. It's quite nice, but look at that big bump. I'll just, I'll keep working with this because um, I'll show you how I can fix that circle as well. Um, so I've done that side. Let me just do this side. Okay, K. Bring that there. Take this into here. Obviously, this wouldn't work if I, if there was no way I could add more edges to this because it was messing something else up. Um, Mo one like that. This has got to come down here like that. Uh, I can probably dissolve this for now. Q. It's looking a bit tidier. Um, what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm going to UL3, get rid of that, UF, delete. And I'm going to do Fong Break Selection HB Modeling. That's going to just give me, it's going to automatically select the um, most of those for me, depending.
depending on the fong angle. Uh, nine. Obviously, I'm, I'm undoing a bunch of things I just did, but that's okay. That's part of modeling. Uh, T. I want this to be the edge that I choose, or the point that I choose as the axis. Scale that down. That's good. If I want this one to be even, I'm just going to double click. MN to dissolve it, that's fine. And I'll just KL to add it back in, and that makes it nice and even again. UE, I've got polygon selected, so I need to deselect UE just to convert those n-gons. That's good. So obviously I've added in extra edges here. Uh, let's see how many edges I've got. Double click. So I've got 16 edges selected. 16 is pretty good. Um, so let me just, if I evenly distribute them, wow, it really, it really rotates it. Let me just bring that back. I could go, I could add a couple of extra edges in here. KL, so that gives me 17, 18. Let's try this. Maybe that's helped a little bit. So I'll rotate that. That's not bad. Obviously, these need to be distributed better. Uh, we'll see. I'll just make this a circle. Selection to circle. And, you know, obviously these can be um, lined up a little better, so I'll just do that. 2E. Actually, I'll go 9. And... Just evenly distribute these like that. Probably all of these actually. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Grab those. You can see why these tools, HP modeling tools, are right here because they get used a heap. Um, so let's go. Let's add that in as well. Yeah, that'll probably work. All right. I'm just looking at this edge here now. Um, I might just bring that out a bit to E. Oops, I've got to shift select. Sometimes you've got a half, uh, control shift select halfway. Now it's going that way. Okay, let's bring it to here. And then around. Oh, please. Oh, that'll do. Ah. I probably should use path, you know, selection, but I'm so lazy. Uh, M O. That'll, that's better. I'll just drag that out a bit. That's good. Okay. Maybe just bring. these in. See what that does, just distribute these. Okay, so not too bad. Let me just do that. 2E. So see how I was able to remove that whole section um, because it wasn't really affecting anything uh, that I couldn't change. I could add a few extra loops, rework this topology here, giving me much nicer rounded corners here, um, move that pole down to an area where it's not causing any problems, and then I can just rework that circular area uh, with those extra edges. You're not always, you don't always have the luxury to add extra loops um, 
because you might add a loop it'll mess something up down in your another area of your object and an op and, and you can't add that loop because it literally uh, will break it and add lumps and bumps that you can't uh, you know magically delete stuff and then re rework it okay so just looking at my reference Q bring this up like that T scale that in and once more copy to there scale it in again spacebar to drop the tool that'll give me my previously selected tool which is the uh, move tool control drag control drag Q render okay so look so see the difference on those on those corners nicely rounded I could have easily just gone with um, the, as I had them before but I think it's good I and mean, this is a personal project I'm doing it to practice modeling I think it's a good idea just to spend the time and you know reevaluate what you've done and see if there's a better way and that might be doing it like I did immediately after I'd already done it sometimes it might be stepping away coming back the next day and going oh yeah I, I can see a better way to do that um, now I do need to sharpen this up a bit so I've got to bring that extra loop back in so just double clicking MO and I've got fixed distance on remember if I have proportional on that will <laughs> apart from the fact that it's not doing what I want it oh, it's such a dick isn't it bring that down it will not give me the result I want it's a proportional is not going to work in that case so fixed distance I want it to be sharper anyway so just be careful it doesn't crash I've had a few crashes with the loop tool in S22 and does the bottom need sharpening a bit I think it does so maybe a little KL loop cut around there as well I think it's looking pretty good um, I'm really happy with the way I mean I have to do I have to put some a loop in here as well there's still a few things I have to do and obviously I have to sharpen that up as well in there but I'm looking at the actual reference image uh, see if I can just move this side move this aside just to there and just zoom in a bit and I'll just come actually I'll just render this first it is a bit it is a bit rounded here I probably have to fix that that shouldn't be quite as rounded but I will fix that um, Q. It's, it's, I've, got, I've got a little bit of crap going on there. Let's just fix that first. Um, M N. I'll just get rid of that. And let's see. Fong break selection. T. It's really hating this here. It's not liking that at all. So I need to flatten that out. Uh, T. like that and maybe even just let's see bring this bring these edges up or these points up a bit spacebar uh, E that's going to be interpreted pretty well let's have a look and see how that looks now uh, where am I you watch we've got rid of we would have gotten rid of that completely now let me just render that see nice and nice and clean nice and flat now I can put that edge back in KL okay so just just do a quick render something like that and 
it might not be tall enough. It's true that this this might not be quite tall enough, but that's easy to fix. And I've got to finish this ex this section down here. But have a look at the reference image. Look at this. That's pretty good. I mean, I have to, like I said, add that edge in there. I have to add this uh, extru circular extrusion there. Maybe sharpen this up a little bit, but. Overall, I'm really happy with this variable extrusion up here, which we did using the magnet tool, and then flattened out this section here, ignoring this completely until that was done. Using the ma magnet tool with that variable to give us that variable extrusion also really helped with this section here. You see how it's there's less extrusion on the point here and more around here. And I was wondering how I was going to tackle that, and the magnet tool actually handled that really well. Um, and then coming in and extruding this, so you know, removing a few lines, a few edges, um, pulling that up, removing a few edges, then pulling that up again, and then just making some adjustments to the topology. Um, so that's ex that's exactly how I work. That's um, pretty much the way I work with everything, depending on how you know tricky it is. I do have probably not not quite enough uh, distance here. You can see it's not quite enough there, but. I'm following a CAD image here, um, and I thought I think I followed it pretty closely. I might have to pull these edges back in a little bit, but overall, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so I'll keep working on the other side this week. I'm doing the right-hand side as well. What I'd like to do next week is um, have a look at how this can be deformed now, because it's actually got a bend in it and it comes it bends at an angle and I want to do all the deformation as well to make that sit under the seat and once I've got those both sides in then I can really start to come in let's grab the reference image um, let's have a look at some of the reference images um, that's a good one. Here we go. So once I've got, see, I've done the seat, and I've done the gas tank, and I think what I'll do once I've got these in place is I'll come in and I'll I'll do the wheel arch here, do this and do this. So I'll do the do the mud flap. Uh, I know Toby's working on this section down here. Toby's a gun, and uh, he's working on some really tricky geometry here. I might leave the engine for now, uh, the engine block. And I, th I think I'm going to come in and just keep working backwards. So I'll work on the, like I said, the mud flap. Um, I, guess if, I guess if that's what that's called. Um, and then I might even start working on, you know, the back tire and the brakes and then move forward. So plenty of different things to do. Some will be easier than others. But uh, this has certainly been a tricky piece. <laughs>